Justice League Annual Issue 2, Robert Venditti writing with Aaron Lopresti on the art. So this is obviously a, a, a one-shot story. It, it does actually have one small uh, tether to when it Venditti wrote feels Justice League. very much like mm. this would have been the next three-issue arc on his... Possibly, book. yeah. But obviously he uh, got taken off. Well, not, you know, he left before that, should clarify. Yeah. That was always yeah. a little unfair there. Bit, bit disappointed in this. This is not the murder mystery I wanted it to be. This became something else entirely. Yeah, it starts off yeah. as a murder mystery because it's this. There's a dead body lying in the, the hall of justice, and they're like, "Wait, how could this have happened?" I did like the small touch though when it's like given the mm-hmm. the introduction boxes for each character. It intentionally doesn't use their superhero names for any of them. Yep, it uses their real names. Yeah, and it does it all in the what they bring to the investigation, not yeah. in all this is their powers. It's forensic scientist, it's the intergalactic policeman, it's not Green Lantern and Flash, it's just specifically focusing on right. who they are. Uh, so, you know, and the crime scene stuff is, is alright, they're looking around, but ultimately the issue becomes more that the Hall of Justice has all these built-in defences for all of the, the various supervillains, so there's, there's built-in defences should Zod ever show up, if Reverse Flash ever shows up, but obviously, these defenses also work on the Justice League because you know mm-hmm. Zod is just the same as Superman, and Reverse yeah, Flash is the like same as Flash. Oversight here. Yeah, uh, so they all start kicking in at basically the same time, and the 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 message of the story I don't dislike, which is because one of the early things that happens once this all kicks in is Barry says, "Hey, give me a batarang." Well, he says, "Give me a a boomerang first, but yeah, he get you get a batarang, yeah, yeah, yeah. and he's like, "Okay, we're going to use my vibration of a batarang, and then." John's going to use the Green Lantern ring to, like, you know, drive it into the wall. And the idea being that three of their, their techniques combined will solve a problem. And that's why ultimately they're going to win is because it's mm-hmm. them working as a team together, mixing and matching, not just being one of, you know, separate entities kind of thing. So, yeah. Right. Nice sentiment. Nice sentiment. Uh, it is, it, and and I, I like the idea of all the defenses being essentially this Batman's way of sneaking in Tower of Babel defenses. Hmm. Yeah. Oh, and, Matt, and that's... Yeah. Uh, it turns out to be Eradicator. That was the, the ultimate uh, thing. It's Eradicator's head, because Eradicator was in one of the stories that Vendetti did in Justice League, and his head's sitting in the, the lab or whatever. <laughs> and it's. Yeah. Computer, and it's just. They thought they had it contained, but clearly not. Yeah. Uh, I will yeah. say, them fighting the two robot drones in the middle was kind of fun, especially the moment. Probably the moment of the issue for me was when John made two pipes out of his energy to redirect their blast to each other to destroy them uh, themselves. I thought that was, that was a fun. really fun idea in visual. Yeah. It was a, a, an impressive use of the, the Green Lantern power, I thought. And did he really understand Green Lantern on that level? Um, yeah, he does. And so. Especially this being, you know, okay, John thinks of it, you know, architecturally. Architect. Like, yeah. okay, how do I solve the puzzle here is how mm-hmm. he treats it rather than just make something to smash them. Right, which is what Guy or Hal would do. Yeah. Oh, definitely. You know? And I love so, them for And I got a yeah. chuckle because they split up at one point. Wonder Woman was with Batman and Flash, uh, Green Lantern, and Superman are together. And I did get a chuckle out of Barry yelling because all the Batmobiles start chasing them in the garage, but also there's a Supermobile and Barry yells out, Why do you even need a Supermobile? You already fly. Yeah. <laughs> it was it's a, a different, different time. time. It's a different yeah, time, Barry. I, <laughs> I did love that. Now, Vendidi's real good. I just. I was sold on this being a murder mystery, and it gets away from that mm. very quickly to the Hall of Justice is attacking, you know, yeah, which... it quickly becomes uh, just the teamwork of... Uh, yeah, and it's fighting rather fine. Than the mystery. And I, I, I would, there's I would nothing even... wrong with that, but it's not the murder mystery in the Hall no, of Justice it's, I wanted. it's not a murder mystery. I, I will say, I, I think it goes beyond fine and B's fun, good stuff. It never yeah, rises above it, being fun and good stuff. Which, it's, yeah. it's not an important story. It's exactly on par with the rest of Venditti's run. Oh, it's, uh, on, that's on true. Yeah. It's, which yeah. is, in his defense here, I'm not knocking him, he no. aimed for that tone the entire yeah. time. It wasn't like he was trying to tell the, a big yeah. story and it was like, ah, it's, it's fun. He always aimed to do short, three, four issue, just fun stories. And this definitely just fits in with those. And it feels like this would have been just an arc coming up that he had, maybe if not the next one, the one after, yeah. um, that he obviously maybe started writing enough of that it was like, well, we can use this. But... I mean, it's, it's 50 pages. This could have easily been either two issues with a few extras added or three issues with a few things trimmed to make it fit mm-hmm. into this annual format. Like, Definitely. You know, yeah. That's all we would have to do. 
Um, and it's full of fun little, you know, beats with them working together, you know, Barry running in a circle with Superman's freeze breath to try and, like, create a hole. Because Superman needs to get out of the sun, because the, yep. the, 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 the Hall of Justice is, went all red sun filter. Uh, depleted his his yeah. solar cells so so but then we get the big moment where him and wonder Woman are like you know carrying the hall of justice back down because doomsday protocol initiated which is doomsday is here so let's go into the sky and blow up <laughs> to yeah. Kill doomsday. yeah i thought it was a lot of fun the interactions between the team i really liked uh just yeah. the tone was fun i i i agree it's disappointing it wasn't the you know like we, i think we were expecting agatha christie murder mystery mm. uh Mm-hmm. Yeah, but with with the Justice League, and it wasn't that. But what it, it yeah, was was it tur- pretty fun. It turned out the victim was just like a fake clone that he'd put there to, to make them think it was a mystery. So even the, even the answer to who the dead guy was was just kind of like okay, just nothing. <laughs> got yeah. a book, got a book nonsense. Uh, I did like the ending where the Justice League are talking about how you know they all work together and this is what the trend is, but then they realize it's only the four of them. Uh, and they're like, wait, where's Batman? And Batman's like putting the Eradicator's head in like a sealed. It's almost like the end of Raiders of the Lost Ark. It's like the it's big. It's very Raiders of yeah. the Lost Ark. He's the one like logging it and putting it away. And I just thought yep. that was kind of funny. Yeah. Top men, you know. <laughs> and it, what one of my favorite beats is actually right at the end. It's after they get the the whole justice back down, and it's Superman just you know on the stairs, just you know, whew, made it. Yeah, close mm-hmm. one. Uh, he doesn't even say anything. It's just all in his his pose and just the the breath of air that's coming out as he puffs his cheeks. And like, oh, that's great art. That that that, that moment. Yeah, no, it's a uh, it's a fun time. It's a it's a fun time. It's not a, a must read by any means. It's one of these things where, on a normal week five, I would say you should pick it up because there's there's not a lot of books out. This is a fine one and done little fun Justice League yeah. story. What's weird is that this week five actually has a lot of other big books to buy, so maybe it's not essential reading. But if you like his Justice League stories, then maybe enjoy this too. So yeah, yeah, that's basically what. Uh, and the arts, you know, solid. A little pressed, I think. Uh, mm-hmm. On the past, the, yeah, yeah, it does all the leaguers pretty well. Yeah, it's bold. So, and, you know, it's very uh, old school, early mid two thousand style that he's got. Yeah, where everyone feels just a little chunky, not in a bad way, but they've got a chunkiness no. to them. Yeah, but not, not to the extent of the 90s. No. So, okay, yeah. Matt, what are you giving... i about <laughs> What are you giving the issue, Matt? I, I'm, I'm going to give this a 7.5. Phil Carter? Yeah, I, I actually also think McGuinness was a good comparison there, but uh, yes. I'm, I'm also going to agree with the 7.5. What's funny is the way Matt was talking about his disappointment, I thought it was when he rated the lowest out of his... No, no, and... it was still good. It wasn't the murder mystery. If I, if I had read this was... Like in the solicits, they say, "Oh, the Hall of Justice turns on the Justice League." I'm like, "Ah, oh, I don't need to read that." Well, the point I was making but... is, I, is, I'm giving this a straight seven because I thought, oh, "Yeah, it was fine, it was fun, it was good," and yeah. I feel like I was expecting Matt to be lower than me, given the way he was talking yeah, about no, it. No, 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 no. So Matt's never lower than anyone. That's true. No, why rating is stupid, except in height. Yes, as we've established. Yes.